Como Stas. Como Stas. I guess I'm saying it right. I think I'm saying it right. Como Stas. Muy bien. I'm good. Very good. I think so. How is everyone doing? We are back with another Bible study. Welcome back to another Bible study. Today, we are going to be studying Ezekiel chapter 23. This chapter is everybody, I can't believe, I've heard a pastor say, use this to rant to to rant about women Ezekiel chapter 23 I've heard a pastor go against women and use this as in regards to women and not this is has this chapter has nothing to do with a woman it has everything to do with a nation it's a parable it has everything to do with nations. So we're going to get in, we're going to dive into this, this chapter. Ezekiel used some crazy language. But we're going to dive into it. That's what we're going to do. That's, that's why we're here to find out the truth, to know the truth, to get set free, to have knowledge and wisdom. That's what we're going to do. So I hope you guys are ready because I'm ready. How is everybody doing out there? Let me know in the comments. How's everybody doing? Welcome to the live. I, first, I want to show my appreciation to the people that are joining me here on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Twitch, and everywhere else. Welcome to another Bible study. This is where we study the Bible every day at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So come on and join us. If you find this stuff, informative, hit the thumbs up button. If you want to know and you want to study along with us, hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when I go live every day at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you can get on the bandwagon, so you can rock with us. With that being said, let's get into the creed. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's get into the creed because we have a lot to read. We have 49 verses to read. Whew. However, we are here to do God's work. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, but on the third day, he rose again. He is seated. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Celestial Church of Christ, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So we got that out of the way. Amen, Lord. What's up, guys? Welcome. I'm seeing you guys' comments already. Let me tell you a little bit about this. This this chapter Ezekiel 23 is broken down into four parts. The first part is the parable of two sisters who became adulterers, a picture of forsaken God's apostasies. God forsaken God, which is our apostasies, people that know the truth of God and they turn away from him anyway. This is covered in verses 1 to 4. The second part of this is the adultery of Samaria. It's called Ahola. This gives us a picture of God giving one over to her sinful ways. He gave Ahola, Samaria, over to her sinful ways in verses 5 to 10. The third part is the adultery of Jerusalem, Oholiba, a picture of false trust which gives us this in verses 11 to 35 in the fourth and final part of this chapter is the sins and judgment of Samaria and Jerusalem reviewed. The, this gives us an understanding of the consequences of sin in verses 36 to 40, 
9. So now let me tell you a little bit about this chapter. Guys, in this chapter, Ezekiel used some of the most sexual graphic language in the Bible. Just mentioning this fact tends to arouse interest in what he has to say. As he did, as he did in chapter 16 and 17, the prophet pictures Israel as a nation that has turned away from God. However, the emphasis of those chapters is different from the emphasis here. The chapter 16 and 17 stresses the fact that Jews turned away from the Lord because they trusted idols and powerful nations for their security and prosperity. This chapter stresses the fact that they turned away from the Lord because they lusted after a relationship with false gods and unbelieving nations unbelieving nations. It should also be noted that chapter 16 and 17 deals with the history of Judea, while this chapter covers the history of both the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judea. Both kingdoms were guilty of spiritual adultery. Remember I told you guys about spiritual adultery equals idolatry? Of turn, They were guilty of turning away from the Lord and uniting themselves to false gods and unbelieving nations. As a result, God's hand of judgment was bound to fall upon both of them. This is the certainty of God's coming judgment. This is part 12. The punishment of those who lust after human religion and power instead of trusting in God. Let's get into this Bible reading. I'm ready as I'm going to be as if you can open up your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter, oh, that's not the right one. Ezekiel chapter 23. You can open up your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 23. We have 49 verses. We're going to be studying. I'm going to try to, I'm going to get through these quick. We're going to blow through them. This message came from the Lord, son of man. Once there were two sisters who were daughters of the same mother. They became prostitutes in Egypt. See, this is that parable. Even as young girls, they allowed men to fondle their breasts. The older girls was named Ahola and her sister was Oliba. I married them and they bore, they bore me sons and daughters. I am speaking of Samaria and Jerusalem, for Aloha is Samaria and Holobi, Aloba is Jerusalem. Aloha lusted after other lovers instead of me. She gave her love to the Assyrian officers. They were all attractive young men, captains and commanders dressed in handsome blues, chariot, charioteers driving their horses. And so she prostituted herself with most desirable men of Assyria, worshiping their idols and defiling herself. For when she left Egypt, she did not leave her spirit of prostitution behind. She was still as lewd as in her youth. When the Egyptians slept with her, fondling her breasts and used her as a prostitute. And so I handed her over to her Assyrian lovers, who she desired so much. They stripped her. They took away her children as their slaves, and then they killed her. After she received her punishment, her reputation was known to every woman in the land. Yet even though Aholiba saw what had happened to Ahola, her sister, she followed right in her footsteps. She was she was even more depraved, ab ab abandoning abandoning herself to her lust and prostitution. She fawned over all the Assyrian officers, those captains and commanders in handsome uniforms, those charioteers driving their horses, all the men attractive, all the all them attractive young men. I saw the way she was going, defiling herself just like her older sister. Then she carried her her prostitution even further. She fell in love with the pictures that were painted on a wall, pictures of Babylonian military officers outfitted in striking red uniforms, handsome belts encircling their waists, 
and flowing turbans crowned their heads. They were dressed like chariot chariot officers from the land of Babylonia. When she saw their paintings, she longed to give herself to them. So she sent messengers to Babylonia to invite them to her, to come to her. So they came, committing adultery with her, defiling her in the bed of love. After being defiled, however, she rejected them in disgust. In the same way, I became disgusted with Aholiba and rejected her, just as I had rejected her sister because she flaunted herself before them and gave herself to satisfy their lusts. Yet, she turned to even greater prostitution. Remembering her youth when she was a prostitute in Egypt, she lusted after lovers with, with genitals as large as donkeys and emissions like those of horses. And so, Holiba, you relieved your former days as a young girl in Egypt when you first allowed your breasts to be fondled. Therefore, Aloba, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will send you your send your lovers against you from every direction, those very nations from which you turned away in disgust. For the Babylonians will come with all the um, Chaldeans from Pekad to Shoah to Koah, and all the Assyrians will come with them, handsome young captains, commanders, chariot horse um, officers, and other high-ranking officers, all riding their horses. They will all they will all come again against you from the north with chariots, wagons, and a great army prepared for attack. They will take up positions on every side, surrounding you with men armed with shields and helmets, and I will hand you over to them for punishment so they can do with you as they please. I will turn my jealous anger against you and then will deal harshly with you. They will cut off your nose and ears, and any survivors will then be slaughtered by the sword. Your children will take away will be taken away as captives, and everything that is left left will be burned. They will strip you off your beautiful clothes and jewels. In this way, I will put a stop to the lewdness and prostitution you brought from Egypt. You will never again cast long, longing eyes on those things or fondly, remembering, fondly remember your time in Egypt. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will surely hand you over to your enemies, to those loathe, those you rejected. They will treat you with ha hatred and rob you of all you own, leaving you stark naked. The shame of your prostitution will be exposed to all the world. You brought all this on yourselves by prostituting yourselves, yourself to other nations, defiling yourself with all their idols. Because you have followed your sister's footsteps, I will force you to drink the same cup of terror she drank. Yes, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. You will drink your, your sister's cup of terror, a cup that is large and deep. It is filled to the brim with scorn and derision. Drunkenness and anguish will, will fill you, for your cup is filled to the brim with distress and desolation, the same cup your sister Samaria drank. You will drain that cup of terror to the very bottom. Then you will smash it to pieces and beat your breast in anguish. I, the Lord, I, the sovereign Lord, have spoken. And because you have forgotten me and turned your back on me, this is what the sovereign Lord says. You must bear the consequences of all your lewdness and prostitution. Verse 36. The Lord said to me, Son of man, you must accuse Ahola and Alobi, Aloba of all their detestable sins. They have committed both adultery and murder, adultery by worshiping idols and murder by burning as sacrifices, sacrifices the children they bore to me. Furthermore, they have defiled my temple and violated the Sabbath day. On the very day that they sacrificed their children to their idols, they boldly came into my temple to worship. They came in and defiled my house. You sisters sent messengers to distant lands to get men. Then when they arrived, you bathed yourselves, you bathed yourselves, painted your eyelids, and put on their 
put on your finest jewels from them, for them. You sat with them on a beautiful embroidered couch and put my incense, my special oil on the, ta- on the table that was spread before you. From your room came the sound of many men arousing. They were lustful men and drunkards from the wilderness who put bracelets on your wrists and beautiful crowns on your head. Then I said, if you really want to have sex with, uh, with old, worn out prostitutes like these, let them. And that is what they did. They had sex with Ohola and Holiba, these shameless prostitutes. But righteous people will judge these sisters' um, cities for what they really are, adulterers and murderers. Now this is what the sovereign Lord says. Bring an army against them and hand them over to, the, to be terrorized and plundered. For their enemies will, be, will stone them and kill them with swords. They will butcher their sons and daughters and burn their homes. In this, in this way, I will put an end to lewdness and adultery in the land. And my judgment will be warning to all women not to follow your wicked examples. Example, you will be fully repaid for all your prostitution, your worship of idols. Yes, you will suffer full penalty. Then you will know that I am the sovereign Lord. If you recognize this as God holy word, type in the comments. Amen. Amen. This is God's holy word. While you guys type in amen, let me check out these comments. See who's in here. This is gonna be, this is gonna be who it's gonna be a breakdown. God ain't playing. He ain't playing. He ain't playing with them. My boy Gaiman is in the house. My co-host, he says, hello, I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Gaiman. What's up, bro? I'm glad to see that you're doing good. I'm glad to see that you're back, Mr. Co-host. My boy Marquise is in the building. What's up, Marquise? Another co-host, another Bible interpreter. That's what we do. We're in Bible study. We have a fellowship. We're doing our thing in here. We're doing our thing. Sorry. Oh, my daughter was looking for this. Um, I got to give that to her. Sorry, got sidetracked. Um, yeah, so we are doing our thing here. Let's get to the amens. Gaming. Thank you very much. You see what he said. Gaming said, Amen. Marquise recognizes this as God's holy word. He says, amen. That's what I'm talking about. Joseph Miller, he recognizes this as God's holy word. Another co-host, he says, amen. James Reed says, amen. He recognizes this as God's holy word. My boy Richard Hammock is back with another Bible study, and he says, amen. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. And... The one and only, the one and only, the goof says, amen. If he says it, another co-host, I don't know. Also, another, another one, another titan, another strong soldier for God. My boy Max is back with another Bible study. He says, amen, and my boy, World News. What's up, World News? He says, amen. Another Back with another Bible study. That's what I'm talking about. Cute animal. Cute animal, what's up, bro? Welcome back to another Bible study. Thank you for recognizing this is God's holy word. Putting that, putting that seal on it. Love it, love it, love it. This is a really kind of tough chapter. But we're going to get through it. It has more. It has is not the chapter, but it's what the meaning behind it is. It's not just so much the chapter, but we got to look at what is the meaning? What is God trying to tell us here? That's the question. That's the key. You guys ready for this interpretation? I don't want to keep you out too long because 
it's already it's already gonna be it's already got it's already going. I'm gonna move through this. Let's open up our chat. Let's open back up the Bible. Let's get into this interpretation. I know y'all ready, like I'm ready. Y'all ready to learn, like always. Let's get it. Guys, what we see here in verses one to four is the parable of two sisters who became adulterers. This gives us a picture of forsaking God being an apostasy. Apostasy. Apostasy is when you know the truth about God and you decide that you know the truth about God. You had a relationship with God, but you decide to turn away from God. And what does that look like? Well, that looks like these two women, these two sister nations. Let me say these two sister nations. This is not talking about actual women, but these are talking about nations. Okay. And God gave a parable about them. Their mother was the United Nations of Israel. The adultery, the adultery, well, it began while in Egypt. They, this began when, when, while they were in, uh, I'm getting tongue tied. This began while they were in Egypt, when they turned away from God to seek and love relationships with idols, false gods, specifically false gods. The, the meaning of their names, Ahola is means is Samaria and Ahola means um, her tent, her sanctuary of false worship, Ahola, O-H-O-L-A-H, Samaria means her tent, her sanctuary of false worship. Aholiba, Aholiba, Aholiba means Jerusalem, okay? O-H-O-L-I-B-A-H. So this is Ahola. And Oholiba, right there. Okay. And hers mean my tent is is in her. My tent is in her. God's true temple and worship. That's what this, that's what her, th- that name means. Oholiba means my tent is in her and God's true temple and work uh, and worship. Okay. So adultery of Samaria. Ohola, Ohola, Ohola. This is that picture that God gi- God's given one of them over to their sinful ways. This is we'll see in verses five to ten, right? What are we going to see here in five to ten? Well, Samaria forsook God and fought and sought relationships with Assyria. They lusted after the warriors of Assyria. They sought protection from them. We know this because we see this in Second Kings chapter, Second Kings chapter fifteen, verse nineteen. Second Kings chapter fifteen, verse nineteen. Let's look at that real quick. Then King Tiglath Pileser of Assyria invaded the land, but Menahem, Menahem paid him 30 silver um 37 tons of silver to gain his support in tight um tightening his grip on royal power menahem extorted the money from the rich of israel demanding that each of them pay 50 pieces of silver to the king of assyria so the king of assyria turned from attacking israel and did not stay in the land okay so we know that also, we see in Second Kings chapter seventeen, Second Kings chapter seventeen, verses one to four, give you some more. Like Hoshiah, son of Elah, uh, be- began to rule over Israel in the twenty fifth in the twenty fifth year of the twentieth year of King Ahaz' reign in Judea. He reigned in Samaria nine years. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, but not to to the same extent as the king of Israel who ruled before him. King Shalmaneser of Assyria attacked King Hoshia. So Hoshia was forced to pay heavy tributes to Assyria, but Hoshia stopped paying the annual tributes and conspired against the king of Assyria by accusing King 
by asking King so of Egypt to help him shake shake free of Assyria's power. When the king of Assyria discovered this treachery, he seized Oshia and put him in prison. So we see that also Hosea, Hosea chapter five, give you some more back um, backstory about this. Hosea chapter five, verse 13. What we see here is when Israel and Judea saw how sick they were, Israel turned to Assyria to get the to get to the great king there, but he couldn't he could neither help nor cure them. Um let me see in verse 14. I will be like a lion to Israel, like a strong young lion to Judea. I will tear them to pieces, I will carry them off, and no one will be left to rescue them. Okay, so now we go into Hosea Hosea, um, Hosea chapter 7, verse 11. We also see is the people of Israel have become like um, silly, witless doves, first calling to Egypt, then flying to Assyria for help. So we see how they 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 looked for nations to help them rather than God. Also, we go to Hosea, Hosea um chapter eight, verse nine. Like a wild donkey looking for a mate, they have gone up to Assyria. The people of Israel have sold themselves, sold themselves to many lovers. So we see that they they on they on a they on their way. Now we go over to Hosea chapter twelve verse one. The people of Israel fed on the wind, feed on the wind. They chase after the east wind all day long. They pile up lies and violence. They are making an alliance with Assyria while sending um, olive oil to buy support from Egypt. So they was playing both sides to look like that. And then the last one is Amos. Chapter 5, verse 26. And it reads, No, you serve your pagan gods, Shahukath, your king god, Kawan. You're a star god, the image you made for yourselves. So we see that you, you see the false idols and stuff. We also see, we also more backstory is dis, they distrusted the Lord and turned completely away from him, trusting in Assyria for security and prosperity, adopting Assyria's idols. We've seen that in, each, in, the, in the verses that we just read. They refused to give up their adulterous ways followed in Egypt. They refused to turn to trust God for security and prosperity. God executed judgment on them. He gave a Assyri- um, Samaria up to Assyria in Second Kings chapter seventeen verses one to forty one. Also, you also look at you can also look at Romans chapter one verses twenty four to thirty two. Assyria Assyria attacked Israel. Assyria attacked Israel. They stripped her. They exiled her children. They killed her. Samaria, Samaria's name became a byword for spiritual adultery. Spiritual adultery meaning forsaking God. The adultery of Jerusalem, Oholiba, is a picture of false trust. And we see this in verses 11 to 35. Eleven to thirty-five, right here. What do we see? This is a failure of Judea. They followed Israel's bad example. She lusted after relations relations with Assyria. She sought security and prosperity in Assyria instead of in God. We also see this in Second Kings chapter sixteen, verses five to eighteen, and Isaiah chapter seven, verses one to five. She defiled herself just as Samaria did. 
the, the capital of Israel had done. She carried her adultery, her adultery even further than a Samaria. She sought relations with Babylon. They saw, saw pictures of handsome Babylonian officers lusted after them, a suggestion of pornography. She sought relations with Babylon, sought security and prosperity in them instead of God. Yo, she became defiled by Babylonians who, re, who mistreated her. She turned away in revulsion. She seek relations with Egypt. We see this in 2 Kings chapter 23, verses 26 to chapter 24, verse 2. Even so, the Lord was very angry with Judea because of all the wicked things Manasseh had done to provoke him. Yo, Richard, she was rejected by the Lord. She became disgusted and turned away from her. He became disgusted and turned away from her because she had broken her, she had broken his trust and relationship with God. World news, she became more and more promiscuous. She sought security and prosperity in relation with Egypt. In with Egypt. Let's see how that went in these chapters. Let's go over to 2 Kings chapter 24, verse 1. During Jehoiakim's reign, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon invaded the land of Judea. Jehoiakim surrendered and paid him tributes for three years, but then rebelled. Okay. Now let's go over to Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 18. Jeremiah 2.18. What do we see? What have you gained by your alliance with Egypt and your covenant with Assyria? What good to you are the streams of the Nile or the waters of the Euphrates River? We also go over to Jeremiah chapter 37, verse 5. Jeremiah 37.5. And we're going to read the verse eight. At this time, the army of um, Pharaoh Hophra of Egypt appeared at the southern border of Judea. When the Babylonian army heard about it, they withdrew from their siege of Jerusalem. Then the Lord gave this message to Jeremiah. This is what the, the Lord, the God of Israel says. The king of Judea sent you to ask me what is going to happen. Tell him Pharaoh's army is about to return to Egypt. Though he came here to help you, then the Babylonians will come back and capture the city and burn it to the ground. So we see that. And also the last one is Lamentations. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17. We look in vain for our allies to come and save us, but we were looking to nations that could not help us. They were, they were in lust. They was lusting after Egypt's military power. They needed it. They wanted it. They put all their trust and hope in it. Like the strong and lustful passion of animals in heat. That's how bad they want it. Remembered and longed to renew the, er the earlier youthful relations she had with Egypt. They wanted Egypt so bad. They wanted to, they had that relationship. They had that understanding and they wanted to you. they wanted to go back to it. They wanted to trust in it and give all their love and their heart and their souls, their idols and the, everything, their false gods. They wanted it all back. However, the judgment of God against Judea, God's four clear pronouncements was this. The, his pronouncements are in verses 22, 28. 32 and 35. Let me give you an let me give you a reading of it. Q animal, God would have roused Jerusalem's lovers against her, the very nation she trusted, and then turned away from Babylon. It's a vassal state, would march against Jerusalem. How so? The goof. They would mobilize a massive, powerful army and invade Jerusalem. James Reed, they would be 
they would be God's agent for executing his justice and punishment against Jerusalem, Marquis. They would be furious in their attack, wounding and killing many, bro. Gaming. They would torture and deport the survivors. Marquis. They would burn some, they would burn some by fire. Bro, burn by fire. World news. It goes even further. They would plunder the homes and cities of all their valuables. And finally, Max, yo, they would fulfill God's purpose, put a stop to Jerusalem's adultery, that of trusting idols, the power and wealth of this world instead of God. That's what they did. Guys, God would allow Jerusalem's enemies, which is Babylon, to conquer her. How so? Well, let me tell you, Joseph Miller, they will be cruel in their treatment of Judea. They will rob, plunder, strip her naked, the nation and the capital. Guys, they would they would expose the adultery of Judea, show the world why God would be why God was judging her because she trusted the power and riches and false gods of this world instead of God. Co-hosts, I submit to you, they would put the cup of God's wrath into Jerusalem's hands. God would give Jerusalem the very same cup of wrath he had given to Israel. Jerusalem must drink it, guys. What does that look like? Well, guys, co-hosts, it was large and deep. It will bring scorn. It will bring drunkenness, sorrow, horror, ruin, and desolation. It will be drained dry. Jerusalem would then dash it, dash it to pieces, beat her, beat her breast in distress and anguish. Richard, Richard, God would make absolute sure Judea bore the consequences of her adultery. Because the people had forgotten God and turned away from him. Apostasy. This brings us to verses 36. 36 to 49. 36 to 49. And what are we going to see here? Now we get into the sins and judgment of a Samaria and Jerusalem, which are reviewed. This is just giving us an understanding of the consequences of sin. Guys, Marquise, the instructions to expose their sinful behavior was this. It was adultery. It was murder. It was idolatry. It was child sacrifice. Defiling, defilement of God's sanctuary, desertion of the Sabbath, hypocrisy, entering God's sanctuary to worship after committing terrible sins, false trust, trusting the world's power and prosperity instead of God, worldly and immoral appearance, extravagant and excessive living that robbed God, used wealth that belonged to God for themselves. Evil association, evil association sought an allegiance or an alliance with carefree, carousing, drunken, lustful um, companions. Judgment was declared by God. Bro, guys, co-hosts, whatever else I can use, the righteous, probably the prophets, would judge Israel, Judea, for who they really were idolatrous and murderers. The Lord would judge Jerusalem, arouse a mob, an army against her. What would they do? The goof, the goof, bro. They would, they, they were going to, to, they were going to terrorize and plunder her to stone and kill her citizens with swords, to slaughter her children and to burn her house, to put an end to her, her immoral behavior. The goof, 
that Jerusalem will be would be warning to all the nations not to ever do this again, to execute the penalty for immoral and adulterous behavior. The Lord has one main purpose in judgment, to make sure people know that he is the only true living God. And in this chapter, I think he made himself clear about this. Let me give you some thoughts. God's God warns us against committing spiritual adultery by forsaking him. Far too many people have turned away from the Lord to seek the pleasure and possession of this world. Think of how many people have professed the Lord but then turned away from him. Think of how many people have forsaken the Lord's church. Sadly, probably more people have turned away than have have remained faithful. The pull of the pull of the world is so strong that many just cannot resist its temptations. As a result, they forsake the Lord and give themselves to the false gods of the world. God strongly warns us not to forsake him for false gods. Also, we must need to, we we have to understand we have to we have to understand this because God is requiring us requiring this of us. The history of Samaria is clear. A picture of God giving people over to their sinful ways. Samaria had lusted after Syria, seeking to establish a relationship with with that unbelieving nation. No matter how many prophets the Lord sent to Samaria, the northern kingdom, or how much he appealed to the Samarians to return to him, they refused. They continued to lust after the unbelieving nations and false gods of the world. The, the, thus, the Lord had no choice. He had to give Samaria up to her lovers. So it's with us. So it is with us. If we continually reject the Lord by giving ourselves to the pleasures of this world, the Lord will give us over to them. He will allow us to live worldly, fleshly, immoral lives. If we choose to love idols, unite ourselves with unbelievers, God will give us over to our choices. Yet we will reap exactly what we sow. If we sow the flesh, if we give into the desires of our flesh, we will reap the corruption of the flesh. If we sow to the to the false gods of this world, we will reap only what false gods can give us, absolutely nothing. God longs for us to remain faithful to him, the only true living Lord. But if we choose to reject him, he will let us go our own ways and reap the consequences. And we must, we have to understand that. We have to get that into our head. And God is trying to show us this and tell us this. But also, nevertheless, when we thrust God behind, behind, behind our back, forget about him, lust after anything else, we show that we do not trust the Lord. Many people look to the world system to provide peace and security, prosperity, purpose, fulfillment, health, happiness, and all the other normal desires of the human heart. But the gift of this world are temporal. They last only brief time. The permanent possessions of these things come only from the Lord, who is the source of every good and perfect gift. If we turn away from him, we can never permanently possess the good things of life. Therefore, we must not look to the world to provide for us. And we got to understand that. We have to get that. We have to understand that. And the last thought, sin. Sin has its consequences. And one, one of the major consequences is judgment. And people who commit sin and refuse to repent with will face God's terrible, terrifying judgment. People who grow old while rejecting God's love will bear God's judgment, just as Jerusalem did. 
And that's what I have for you guys. And I didn't, I didn't even do that bad. I didn't even do, oh, I didn't even do that. I didn't even do bad with the timing. Tomorrow we're going to talk about Ezekiel chapter 24, the certainty of God's coming judgment, part 13, the condemnation of those who, those who behavior and values are corrupt. If you got the goof already, the goof loved it. If you got some value from this, this was valuable. You, you know, you heard those, you heard that, that reading of that verse, those verses, and you like, oh Lord, Jesus talking about prostitution and God talking about prostitution. Ezekiel going crazy on prostitution. Like, what? And then you get into it and you find the true message. Look at what we have discovered, guys. A true message. Yes. We thought one thing, when you're looking at it from the face value, we thought one thing, but it's a whole nother different thing. Yes. Let's see who, let's see who recognizes it. Let's see who type amen in the comment. Oh, it's me is here. I see you. It's me. I'll be watching. It's me. Look at the goof. The goof loved it. That's what I'm talking about, the goof. Yes. Yes. I was ready for that one. Yes. You got the hearts, goof. World News says amen. If I've earned, if I have earned, if I put in this together really good, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Let it be spread out to everybody else so they can know. Give me a thumbs up so when I promote this this live, people will be able to, to that'll be able to push out and it'll be able to grab other different people. That's right. Cute animal puts the seal on it. Boom. Amen. Max. Boom. Amen. It's me is here. Boom. Amen. I could just see that that big stamper. Just like, uh, boom. That red big stamper. Amen. By Zid. Boom. Amen. With the hearts. I gotta. I never do that. Okay. Yeah, with the with the reverberating hearts. That's what I'm talking about. Copyright. What's up, copyright? Copyright says a Men, my boy channel, 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 channel says, amen, putting that seal on it. Gaming, I love you, Gaming. You're a good man. Gaming says, amen. My boy, Marquise, Marquise, Marquise says, amen. That's what I'm talking about. Joseph Miller, boom, amen. My boy, James Reed comes in, puts that seal. He says, amen. Richard Hammock, another co-host, puts that amen. And look at this. We have a new guest. Robin says, Amen. She puts her seal of approval on it. She recognizes it. And she says, she puts her amen on it. Welcome, Robin. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And she is saying, looking forward to the next part. That's right. <laughs> Me too. I always get like that, Robin. I always be like, I can't wait to see what happens next. Like, I'll be waiting. I'll be getting, like, I'll be so excited. After I get off this live, I'd be so excited. I'd be like typing out the the next schedule because I'd be like, I just can't wait for it. Well, I come home and I start studying. I'd be like, oh, I can't wait to see what happens next. This is good. So I'm definitely welcome, Robin. Thank you very much for having enough courage to type amen and to be a part of our community. Everybody here is nothing but love. Thank you very much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. We are here. We do this Bible study every day. 
every day at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you like this Bible study, if you got value, it was interesting. It was, I put it together good. If God showed up, hit the thumbs up button. Consider subscribing to this so you can be notified when I'm going live as well. I want to show my appreciation to all the people that are watching me on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, um, TikTok. I can't say Instagram because I don't, I don't mess with Instagram. But thank you very much. And I want to in my people, my strong people, I cannot forget... Thank you, Robin. Thank you very much. She said, I'm subscribing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are happy to have you here. Thank you so much. To my strong people, to my strong people, the co-hosts, the, the, who's getting ready to do the ending? Somebody type in the ending. What do I normally say at the end while I'm going through this? My strong people, I'm giving everybody, I'm giving everybody shout outs. Gaiman, Marquise, Gaiman, Marquise, Joseph Miller, um, James Reed, Richard Hammock, The Goof, Best Max, World News 98, Cute Animal, uh, Cute Animals, It's Me, Michael Bizid. Copyright. This um this is a channel channel. I call him channel. Robin, our new subscriber, Robin is here. Thank you guys so much. Thank you very much for being here. I love you guys. We be having we be diving into this. We be getting down and dirty. And. To end this off, my co-host channel says, God bless you and God bless your family. I will see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you guys for being here. God bless you. God bless your family again.